All right. Good morning. Looks like we are live. Just going to do a quick refresher on the screen to make sure it is showing up for you guys. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining us today. And we are going to be painting a bottle of wine and a wine glass. And we're going to kind of actually do this pop art style. So we're going to slap some paint on the canvas. Um, and we'll take it kind of section by section. We won't do as many layers, but it's going to be a lot of fun. So a few things about what you're looking at. If you look at the canvas, you can tell that I'm actually reusing a canvas. There's different textures on here. And there is a link in the description box below on how to reuse a canvas. And this kind of helps you save some money um, and you can paint more. So check that out. The other thing that you're looking at here is we do have an outline already on my canvas and you've got two options for this. First option is pause the video and draw what you see on your canvas and then pick up the video for the painting portion. Or if that seems a little overwhelming for you, at the end of this demo, um, there's a link in the description box below. I will upload this traceable to my website and you can download it, purchase it, download it, and then with carbon paper, you can transfer your outline on here. And it kind of gets rid of some of that frustration of trying to draw before you start painting. So whichever option that you would like, um, go for that one and then just pick up this video at this stage and we'll start doing our painting. So I am gonna do kind of a light, uh, light lavender color in the background. We'll have a raw sienna brown um, table here. And then we're going to kind of go pop art style. We're going to use some really bold um, kind of section off some colors. Like we'll have, this will be kind of a blue reflection and then a darker blue in here and then a little bit on the table. But we're literally just going to slap some paint on here and just have fun moving it around. And we'll use a few other colors um, blending in there. So, all right. So again, I'm going to start with that background and I'm going to use... Um, a little bit of purple and white so I'll pull that white aside and a tiny amount of purple goes a long way to kind of make that lavender color and it is easier when you're painting to start off with a light color you can always add more pigment um, but it can be a little more frustrating if you go too dark and then you're trying to backtrack to a lighter color all right so again like I said we're gonna be going from the edges of this line to the edge of the canvas and a few brush strokes to try. Try using the full width of the brush, turn it sideways and do a little line, or my favorite one, literally just slapping it on there. So we're gonna be filling in all that space. And if you're using student grade paint, I actually recommend that you apply your paint a little bit thicker so that way we can do some of the blending. Um, and feel free to just kind of adjust what you might need for your paint. And if you're following along and you're not painting, but you're using crayons or markers or colored pencils, awesome. You can just use this as a base for where I'm placing colors, but adjust to what you need for the tools that you may be using. Um, and any of the videos on my channel, you can use any materials to follow along and paint. It's more important to just get creative rather than having the perfect or best tools, just create, use what you have at home. And if you are painting on a stretched canvas, I recommend that you carry that color over the tops, the side, and the bottom. Uh, just looks nice when you hang it on the wall, having that color wrap around the edge. And if you need to mix your color two or three times like I'm doing, don't stress about getting the exact same shade every single time. Having some variety in your background is very beneficial, but also more importantly is, even though you may have to mix your color three, four, five, six times, the more that you mix it, the more your brain is taking on the information of how much pigment to add, what it looks like when you add too much, what it looks like when you add too little. So you're learning a lot and you're absorbing a lot of information. So don't stress if you have to mix your color multiple times. All right, we've got a few of you jumping on. Hi, Gwen. Thanks for checking this out. Hope you're doing well. And if anybody has any questions today, feel free to leave your question in the chat box um, and I will address it while I'm painting. And if you are catching this on the replay, totally okay to leave a question in the comment section. And I do look every morning at my YouTube um, comments and everything and will reply. 
so feel free to leave questions down there as well. You can also email me paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com for any of your questions. Um, and even since I just stated my email address, anything that you paint, please send me pictures of what you paint. Um, they make me smile when I'm having my coffee in the morning and some of you guys make me tear up. I'm just so proud of you and so proud of the pictures that are coming through and seeing kind of your interpretation of my videos, of my instruction, and just how, how much easier you guys are stating that you're having with the painting process after following some of the videos. All right, so we are gonna do a little wet on wet blending and this is kind of fun. So you don't necessarily need to clean your brush off, but I'm just gonna grab a big chunk of white, literally slap it on there. It feels really good to just slap paint on the canvas, especially if you have frustrations or anxiety or irritations. But once you slap that color on there, I'm using light pressure and I'm just working my brush on top of it. And what it's doing is blending with your um, background color and the new color that you introduce. So we can do that same thing uh, closer to the bottom of the table. I'm throwing that direct purple on there, a little intense. And then sometimes wipe that brush off if you've got excess paint. And then I'm just gonna blend that purple into the background. And you can use a touch of water, but you never want your brush dripping wet with water as you do this. And should you happen to like maybe overlap your wine glass or overlap the table, totally okay. Acrylic paint is rather forgiving. So you can either wipe it off with a paper towel or let your paint dry and then just paint the appropriate color on top of it. Like I said, you've got a lot of wiggle room with acrylic paint. Basically, I don't want you to stress. Oh, awesome, awesome. So let's see, I haven't, I got a few this morning and then I didn't check emails because I was doing some voiceover. So I will check my emails um, again after this video. Uh, I was doing voiceovers for a Van Gogh painting, two dog paintings, and I think that's it at the moment. So hopefully in the next month, um, I will get some of those videos uploaded for you. And do check out the other videos on my channel. I've got quite a few and they are all geared towards first time and beginner painters. That is kind of my niche market. Um, and I encourage that you take instruction or take classes from a variety of teachers. Each teacher is gonna have a different way to explain something. And the more that you can hear similar concepts, concepts explained in different ways, the more likely you are to retain it and also implement it into your practice. All right, and if you need to, you can go back to that middle lavender color. If you're having some issues blending and maybe your paint starts to get dry, it is kind of a back and forth with painting. All right, so I'm gonna clean the brush. We're gonna move down to the table and I'm gonna use the raw sienna for that and then we'll put some white highlights on it. And then we'll move to our wine bottle, to our glass, and then to our reflections on here. All right. And again, applying that pretty thick. This is raw sienna, my lighter brown. And you can see that if I push quite a bit, you know, you can see some of the canvas coming through compared to if I actually put it on there and then apply it a little bit thicker with less pressure. So play with your paint and kind of find what is a good groove for you. And if you need to move down to a smaller brush, even though I might be using something different, feel free to adjust for what you need at home. And if you're painting on a larger canvas and you need a bigger brush, go with that. Now let's see, we got a little bit in between here and then a little bit on this edge. And if you realize that you're maybe shaky as you are applying your paint to the canvas, it means you're holding your breath. So I want you to breathe, maybe smile a little bit. Um, and again, if you're finding that you're shaky right as you reach the canvas, if you exhale as the brush touches the canvas, you're gonna be a little less shaky. And just, we hold our breath when we're nervous or we wanna do really good and we're kind of scared. Um, I completely understand that feeling, but it's not good to hold your breath. All right, so while we have this raw sienna on here, I'm gonna put a little bit of a highlight at the edge of the table. So I'm gonna wipe that brush off. You can clean it if you need to. I'm gonna grab some of that yellow and we're literally just gonna place it right on top of that raw sienna. 
And just like we did in the background, we're gonna use that wet on wet blending method to just kind of work this into here. And what you're gonna notice with the wet on wet blending method is the lighter colors get eaten up rather quickly in the darker colors. So you'll learn to maybe not move your brush as much when you're using the lighter colors, or if you need to, if you end up doing this and you lose that kind of distinct lighter yellow color on there or the yellowish brown color, just go back and reapply. All right, and actually I want a bit of a shadow coming down here. So I'm gonna use the purple instead of black. You can create your shadow elements with different colors. So I'm gonna use a little bit of that purple, slap it right on there. Let's go for a little bit more, maybe a little bit over there. And then same thing, we're just gonna blend it in to that paint. Now, if you're following along at home, you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. Just use um, the general placement of where I put stuff as a reference. Um, the more that you paint, the more comfortable it kind of becomes, and the more you'll kind of understand why placement happens in certain areas. But right now, for my first time painters, you're just strengthening your power of observation, observing what you see on screen, and then applying that to your canvas to the best of your ability. And that's all really art is, is just doing the best that you can. And you'll notice that from one painting, you may be doing something kind of difficult. And then when you go to paint something again, the stuff that you were doing in your prior painting makes a little more sense. Um, so these are compounding uh, skills that you're gonna be building from. All right, so let's see, we're gonna move into the wine bottle. And we kind of have our wine hanging out in this area. So we're gonna have kind of the bottle color hanging out here. And I'm actually gonna go for a light minty green and then we'll throw some yellow in it um, to kind of warm it up for some highlights. So pulling that white aside, a little bit of green goes a long way. And like I said, that's a little almost too cool for me. So if we add a little bit of yellow to it, it kind of warms it up. There we go, a little bit of a tealish color, but I kind of like that. All right, we're gonna fill this in. And for the, today's demo, I don't know if I'll get back to doing these black outlines because I do want them to dry by the end of the class or by the end of the painting. Um, so I'll state it again towards the end of the video, but I do want you to redo your black outlines after everything's done and painted. All right, so made my color again a little bit different. I kind of like it a little darker. So if you kind of apply your paint on your canvas, but then realize that you need to change the shade, don't be afraid to do that. Um, it may look one way on your plate, and then when you put it on your canvas, it might not be the shade that you were going for, or halfway through you may change your mind and go with that. That's part of the process. All right, so I'm gonna grab a little bit more of that yellow and I'm gonna do what I call perimeter mixing. So I'm keeping that base color that I was just using. I'm gonna put that yellow next to it and then pull a little bit of that color into it so that way we have a more yellow version here and then we have a little bit of that cooler, the darker version. So that way I can grab from this pile and this little section up here, we're going a little bit lighter. And this is also gonna be the reflection on the inside of the glass right here. And like I said, really pop art style on traditional colors. Let's go ahead and put this guy in here too. It would be the label or the seal on the bottle. All right, and I'm gonna actually put that brush down. I'm gonna grab the pointy brush. I'm gonna grab some of that direct yellow and we're gonna do a little wet on wet blending right in here as well. So on the edge where this glass is overlapping the bottle, I'm gonna throw a little bit of yellow in there and then I'm also gonna throw a little bit of yellow inside that circle. And just shooting right up there. So what I want you to do is if you're painting along with acrylic paint, you can kind of put that yellow on there. Then we're gonna wipe that brush off. And then just like when we did the yellow on the table down there, we're just gonna pull some of that into the underneath base color. But I still want you to keep some of that saturation, some of that intenseness of the yellow. All 
All right, and whoops, got a little droplet of water right there. Now I'm actually gonna take a touch of blue and same thing like we did with the yellow over here. We're gonna put it on the edge, pull some of that color into it and just change it a little bit. Like I said, I call this perimeter mixing and we're gonna put this in a few areas on our bottle. Same thing, I'm just gonna place it on here and then I will blend that into the pigment. So wipe that brush off. And a few ways you can blend, you can actually just kind of move it and smear it or you can do a bit of a tapping method. And sometimes that's a little bit easier for my first time painter. So try both methods and see what works better for you. All right, so we're gonna start moving into some shades of blue here. I'm gonna go back to that middle size brush, clean out the brush really good. All right, so I'm gonna make this a little bit lighter. So you can pull some of that blue aside. I'm still going pretty dark. I just wanted to make it a touch lighter. And we're gonna fill in our wine bottle down here. And again, unexpected colors. You can change these out to be whatever you want. Um, I think I had somebody request pop art style. So I'm just combining the wine bottle request and a pop art style. And again, just kind of filling in these spaces, applying it thick, just like we did with the greens. We'll be adding our colors on top of this. And again, if you have to mix that color two or three times, a little variety is not gonna be the end of the world. All right, let's put a little bit of this in the table reflection. This is gonna be an intense reflection, but I like it because it's pop art. Okay. So while that is still wet, I'm gonna grab some of the direct blue and we're gonna do the same thing that we did on the top of the bottle. I'm gonna go kind of on the edge. Let's go a little bit in the shadow. And then let's go a little bit underneath the glass here because it would be creating a bit of a cast shadow on the bottle. Then wipe your brush off again. And whichever blending method that you were enjoying, we're gonna blend that into it. So it's either the kind of smoothing and rubbing or the pointillism method, the stabbing method. Depending on how you're feeling, one may be more entertaining and more fun than the other, so play with it. And again, if you move it too much and you lose that gradation, lose that color, just reapply your dark color on it and then blend it in again. And we're gonna take a touch of that white same thing. And then I actually, today I kind of prefer the stabbing method. So whatever you are enjoying for the day. And if you are taking progress pictures, if you've seen some of my other videos, I do recommend taking progress photos as you move along and then go back after you're done painting and observe those progress photos. And I want you to observe how you look at each photo a little bit different based on adding a new color or getting rid of that white canvas space. All right, so now we're actually gonna go in, we're gonna get make, this is gonna be pretty dark. So I'm gonna put that direct blue and then we'll be using some purple to make a few shades on there. Then we'll move our way to the wine glass. So, yep, just grab a big chunk of that blue. And this is actually not as dark as I would like it. Um, so by adding the purple, I think that might get it to where I'm wanting. Again, you have full permission to change, deviate from what I'm doing and make this painting your own. I have had quite a few pictures that have been sent and I like what you guys painted way better than what I painted for the demo. So I really enjoy seeing that. So there's nothing wrong with painting it and making it look better than what I painted. Even though you're painting at home and you're a little bit nervous, I still get nervous painting on camera. 
Um, you know, we all have our challenges. We all have our things that we push ourselves out of our comfort zone. And me creating these videos has been one of those. And I've been doing this for, um, I think I started about two years ago, my very first video. Um, and just kind of keep making it work. And it really has been from your guys' emails and the feedback and the pictures that I'm seeing that encourage me to keep making more. All right, so we are gonna come in with some purple. We're gonna define the bottom of that bottle so the reflection does not fully run into um, the actual bottle. So grabbing that purple, gonna go right along the base of that and then blend it in with that blue. And it does become a really pretty, dark, deep, cool blue. And I'm gonna put a little bit of that purple behind that cup. And as you're blending this, I am using light pressure. So you don't wanna to push too hard. Um, and it's kind of like icing a cake, especially with the thicker paint on there. Let's throw a little bit of purple here on the reflection, but not towards the bottom of the bottle. Okay, and I think this will actually look really cool with the black outline at the end. So I'll put the, I'll do the black outline uh, probably after the demo's done, because I think we're, yeah, we're just now at about 20 minutes. Um, so on the thumbnail for this image, you'll see the black outline. But at home, I do want you to use a small pointy brush and black paint and basically redo that entire traceable or that initial image that was on the canvas and i will want you to go uh, make your black outline a little bit overlap the element behind it as well as the element in front of it so it's going to overlap a little on the cup and the bottle as you do all of those okay so let's get some wine in this glass the most important part of the painting so we're going to have red wine in here. If you want to do white wine, want to do a different color, go right ahead. So I'm going to use that straight red. I'm going to fill it here. I will actually go right on top of this, but this is going to be where we're going to add some purple and red for our shadow. Same for this little section here. All right, some intense red. And like I said, you can change the shade or the color of your wine to be what you want it to be. Here we go, just going right over that. You can still kind of see that shade, that line in between, or uh, shining through. All right, sorry about that. So grabbing just a little bit of that purple and painting right on top of the red. And it's kind of cool that we're putting this purple on top of the red and you can see that it's a little bit different, a little bit of a warmer purple compared to that exact same purple that we put on top of the blue. And it's a cool, um, little more intense purple um, for that one. So this is something that artists will spend their entire careers, their entire lives playing with color theory. How one color next to another color looks different, changes, um, it's interpreted differently. And that's another reason why I encourage that you take your progress pictures and then go back and focus on them and look at it. Um, and notice how you look at stuff differently as elements in your painting change. All right, so we're gonna clean the brush really good. We're gonna move into the wine glass. Oh, actually, before we do that, we need to get this little area. Get that brush cleaned off. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna move just kind of section by section. So here, because technically we are looking through this glass, that's why this part was a little bit lighter for the uh, greenish bottle behind it. Technically, we have blue hanging out behind this. So we're actually gonna do that blue and purple, but we're gonna go a little bit lighter. And pull some white in there. There we go. Um, it's not bad, let's go a little more purple on that. 
And again, we're just going to fill this space in. And if you do notice, as you look through um, clear bottles or glass containers, you'll see a little distortion. You know, so even though we might be looking through this glass, the line moves a little bit, the color shifts a little bit. And if you do check out any artists that do still life uh, paintings, you'll see where they incorporate glass in quite a few of their compositions. And they play with that. They're, they're training their eye to look at the shapes and the way it's reflected and the way objects interact with each other. All right, so our next part, I'm actually just gonna use that direct white. So um, clean your brush out really good because you don't want any residual color shining through. And I'm gonna go right over this area and then we'll add a few touches of color to it. Actually, before we do the color, we're gonna put white in one more spot while our brush is kind of clean. All right, so we're gonna go down to the base here. Or the stem of our wine glass. All right, so just kind of filling that in and then we're gonna put a little bit on the base here and really, I'm just getting that base of white on there, and then we're going to put a few colors on top of it. Let's put a little on this side, too. All right, super fun painting white on a white canvas. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to grab, let's do a purple, actually. Tiny amount of purple. And right on the right-hand side of where we put the white, I'm just going to pull that straight down. We're going to put a little bit right there, right here, and then I'm going to do a little bit with blue and then we'll use light pressure and just kind of pull these through the white. So I'm going to put this same thing hanging out where that purple was. There we go, right on top of it. Just putting a few here and I'm basically just using a little bit of pigment that I'm going to pull through that white paint. So when you're done with that, wipe your brush off, clean it off if you need to because you don't want any extra pigment on there. And you do want your brush kind of dry. You don't really want much moisture on your brush as we do this. So I'm going to start up here because it'll be a little bit easier to see. And just like adding that yellow highlight on the bottle, just using light pressure and pulling some of this through not moving it too much. Wipe that brush off again. And I want to diffuse this now because this is actually more pigment than I wanted. So I'm grabbing some more white, putting it next to it, and then I can kind of blend that into it. There we go. Goes a little bit lighter. All right, and then wipe that brush off again. We're going to do the same thing as we come down here. And that stabbing method, like I said today, I am enjoying that method. Each day you may paint a little bit differently. And then just filling out a little bit of that base of our glass. All right, and then we do have a bit of our reflection here and then the reflection on the table. So I'm actually going back to that blue that we made up here. I'm going to make it a little lighter. There we go. And let's add some more purple to that. There we go. So filling in, it's almost like a little triangle shape down here on the base of the glass. And if you start getting a little sloppy and going outside those lines, don't freak out because when you go back and re-add those black outlines, um, it cleans up some of the edges, which makes it kind of nice. All right, I'm gonna go for a really light blue. So grabbing that white, a little bit of the color I was just using, but going way lighter. There we go.
So not bad, kind of fun, funky little pop art style. I'm gonna take some of that direct purple and right on the base of that glass, on the bottom, on that reflection, putting some of that dark purple, then we're gonna wipe that brush off and pull that into that reflection on the table. Alright, so this gets us at about 20 minutes, so not bad. And like I said, I would want to go back over. I'm going to go ahead and I'll do the outline of the bottle right here, but I still have quite a bit of wet paint. So I do recommend that you um, let your paint fully dry and then go back and do the outline. And I think the edge of my table is dry, so I can do that right now and show you. So you do clean your brush really good. I'm going to use that pure black paint. And if you need to, put your pinky out and use that as your pivot point or rest your forearm against the table. But you want to kind of keep a slightly consistent line as you do this and kind of medium pressure. So you can see where that line is overlapping the table and my paint's still wet and the background. And by doing this kind of outline on everything, the bottle, the wine glass, the table, it gives a bit of that pop art feel. Again, completely optional. And then also some people in my classes, if you don't wanna do a black outline, I had somebody do red, somebody else did teal. Um, so you can change the color of what the outline will be. Completely your call. And this is good practice for getting comfortable with the brush and your pressure. Light pressure is gonna create a skinnier line. More pressure is gonna create a wider line. And with more practice, you will understand and get comfortable with what you are capable of creating and also the things that you want to work on to keep getting better at the painting process. All right, so I just did a few lines. I'm going to wait for this to dry before I finish those. Um, but like I said, just go over all those outlines again, and it gives a really nice kind of pop feel to it. So if there's anything that you want me to paint in the future, please leave a comment and I will add that to the list. And if you would like to see the work that I'll be doing in the future for the demos, go to my main page and scroll down to the future streams and you can see what we'll be doing. As well, you can also look at all the prior streams that I've done in the last month and all the other videos. So thanks for checking out the channel, checking out this video and painting and getting creative with me. Uh, make sure you like the channel, uh, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and um, I will catch you on the next video. Have a great day. Cheers.